Welcome to Maximal Being, a podcast devoted to ditching fad diets and using real science to get you healthy and feeling great. I'm Doc Mock, a GI and functional medicine doctor who harnesses the power of gut health to get you achieving your goals. And I'm Jackie P, a well-informed layman who challenges the experts and asks the questions that you want. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button or leave a comment. And now, on to the show. What's going on? Maximal Beings, Doc Mock here with MaximalBeing.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment. It does help us to get the word out. If you have any questions, you can email us at team at MaximalBeing.com. Enjoy the episode. Hello, 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 Maximal Beings. It's I, Doc Mock, and you are tuning in to a solo sode. Today, we are going to talk about advancements in colon cancer, a subject very near and dear to my heart as a gastroenterologist. Go ahead, if you haven't done so already, and hit the subscribe button and um, leave us that five-star review. It really does help us to get the word out to other people about gut health. And that's gut health that's delivered by me, Doc Mock, a board-certified gastroenterologist and functional medicine doctor. And this is not woo-woo medicine that I'm talking to you about today. This is the real deal. Um, For those of you that are tuning in for the first time, welcome. So glad to have you. Um, um, Again, I am a board certified gastroenterologist and functional medicine doctor practicing in Florida in the United States. Um, And this is the Maximal Being Podcast. Are you a healthcare practitioner searching for a comprehensive solution to streamline your patient referrals and improve collaboration with other practitioners? Look no further than Rupa Health, the ultimate platform for integrative and functional medicine practitioners. As a healthcare practitioner, I've struggled with the traditional referral process for labs. It's time consuming, inefficient, and often lacks the necessary communication between providers and patients. But ever since I started using Rupa Health, everything has changed. That's right, Rupa Health is revolutionizing the way that practitioners connect and order lab work with their patients. Their advanced platform allows you to effortlessly send and receive patient lab referrals and secure their information, sending them the kits directly. This makes the communication directly with other patients and practitioners easy to take care of. I can't stress enough how much time and energy Rupa Health has saved me. With just a few clicks, I can easily order lab work and track their progress, and then I receive the results directly into my inbox, which I can send to the patients automatically with recommendations. Absolutely, Rupa Health's extensive network of lab testing and curated, integrated, and functional medicine testing allows practitioners to receive the highest quality of care and dedicate their practice to a patient-centered, holistic approach, which aligns perfectly with the values of healthcare in a functional medicine practice. Plus, Rupa Health provides you with excellent customer support. Their team is responsive, knowledgeable, and always helps with assistance in billing questions and how kits are shipped to your patients. They are dedicated to helping practitioners like us provide the best possible care for our patients. And if you're a patient listening, it allows you to seamlessly order your lab testing and receive all of the necessary information. Rupa Health has been a game changer for my practice, and as you know, it will be for yours too. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to save on lab testing by heading to labs.rupahealth, that's R-U-P-A dot com slash store slash storefront underscore V is in victory, G is in grape, X zero zero four zero zero. That's labs.rupahealth.com backslash store backslash storefront underscore V is in victory, G is in grape, X zero zero four zero i'll see you later maximal beings um jackie p couldn't be here today he is busy uh saving the financial universe so we'll see him back in some upcoming episodes but today i really wanted to highlight a couple of really useful articles the first one is coming out of the new england journal of medicine and this is published by daniel chung who's at mass general hospital and it's titled, A Cell-Free DNA Blood-Based Test for Colon Cancer Screening. And in this study, um, they highlight the importance of a potential blood-based test for colon cancer screening. Um, they had about 10,000 participants, um, of whom 7,800 uh, met the eligibility requirements. 
Um, they all underwent a colonoscopy, which is the gold standard for colon cancer screening, for those of you that don't know out there, as well as a blood-based circulating DNA test. What they found is that about 83% of the patients um, that had uh, colon cancer had a positive test. Um, and in fact, 87% uh, um, of those patients, um, it was diagnosed as stage one, two, um, or three. The only other thing I'll say is that only about 13% of the population who had precancerous polyps, um, so those are lesions that we find on colonoscopy and can remove, um, uh, had a positive test. And in addition, um, about 10% of the patients who did not have colon cancer um, also had a positive test. So taking a step back, you know, colon cancer remains the third um, most common cancer in the United States. It affects both genders. Um, the average age of individuals continues to lower over time, most likely due to our food system, environmental toxins, those sorts of things. Um, you should start get, getting screened at age 45 for most people. Um, for people that are of African-American and Afro-Caribbean heritage, that may be lower, like in the 40s for some reason. We don't really understand. Um, also, your family history is important. So if you have a family member that was diagnosed with colon cancer, you take their age of diagnosis and subtract 10, and that's when you should get screened or 40. And this is uh, individuals that are diagnosed um, under the age of 65. Usually cancers that are diagnosed over 65 are unlikely to be gen genetically linked. There additionally are um, people that are at higher risk than other populations. So that's things like Lynch syndrome. Um, which is, uh, you know, you have these um, things called microsatellites, they scan your DNA, and when you get damage to DNA, say with things like um, sun exposure, etc., they repair those damages. And so they don't really have all of those little proofreaders that repair the damage. And so as a result, they can get uh, various sorts of cancers, um, colon being one of, one of the common ones. Um, those people have a whole different screening modality, as do people with familial adenomatous polyposis or FAP, um, which they're just lacking uh, you know, certain uh, characteristics along the uh, polyp uh, prevention pathway. Um, you know, There's a lot of uh, buzz out there about stool-based DNA tests. Stool-based DNA tests uh, overall are about uh, detect colon cancer in about 92% of cases. That's also a New England Journal of Medicine article. Um, that's, you know, com commonly, um, these tests will look at things like blood in the stool as well as uh, DNA products. We recently had an article with a brilliant scientist who created an RNA-based stool test that's slightly uh, better than these DNA-based tests, um, ratcheting up to about 94%. So these are options. And of course, colonoscopy remains the gold standard. What's the benefit of a colonoscopy? Well, um, if you have a good bowel preparation, your colonoscopist, your gastroenterologist has the ability to remove a precancerous polyp. So if they find a polyp that has the potential to turn into cancer, um, they can remove that right then and there and therefore eliminate the risk of that polyp turning into cancer over time, which is what all these, you know, uh, really the, most cancers are the result uh, in the colon of a polyp that is mutated over time. I mean, your colon's got a hard job, right? It's, it's got to turn over the cellular integrity roughly about every three, four days. Um, and so, you know, if you're doing that your entire life, one of those factory workers in there repairing the colon is just bound to, to malfunction and make something that isn't right and then add time to that and as the potential to turn into cancer. Um, Colonoscopy has like an ick factor because people are have to undergo sedation. You have to take a bowel preparation, which is a pain in the butt. Um, but, you know, I will tell you the volume of bowel preparations has gone down over time. The ick factor of the preparations has gone down. There are pill-based um, bowel preparations that are pretty good. Um, prior iterations of that cause phosphate-induced kidney injury. So I shy away from those a little bit. I'm a little bit dubious. I, I would like to see where these bowel preparations go. Um, and, you know, of course, uh, you're placing an instrument through the anus, which just gets people icked out for some reason. Um, you know, while you're sedated, you don't experience these things. And again, uh, it is the gold standard um, in the right hands of a good gastroenterologist, which I assume pretty much everybody out there is. Um, you know, your, your gastroenterologist can also remove precancerous polyps. 
As far as the interval for follow-up, that depends upon the size, number, characteristic of polyps. And there are standard guidelines for practice available. Um, but it's great to have another option. You know, I a lot of people ask me, Doc Mock, do you feel like intimidated by these stool-based uh, DNA tests? Um, do you feel intimidated by this blood-based uh, DNA test? I particularly don't. Um, you know, as long as it gets more people screened, that's the most important thing. Roughly about 40% of Americans do get screened for colon cancer. So if that gets a few more people uh, to us eventually to get a colonoscopy or find a colon cancer, which is, a, you know, a very treatable cancer most of the time, um, you know, that that is a very, very positive thing. So the more things we have in our armamentarium, the better um, and that's why I wanted to make all of you out there aware of this really important article. Are you looking for high quality evidence-based supplements to support your functional medicine practice? Look no further than Fullscript, the leading platform for healthcare practitioners to prescribe and order professional grade supplements. As a functional medicine and gastroenterology doctor, I trust Fullscript to provide me with a wide range of high quality supplements that meet specific needs of my patients. Their extensive product catalog includes trusted brands, ensuring that I have access to the best options for my patient's health. That's right, Fullscript offers a comprehensive selection of supplements, including vitamins, minerals, botanicals, and specialty formulations, all sourced from reputable manufacturers. Plus, their rigorous quality control ensures that you're getting products that meet the highest quality standards of purity and potency. And what I love most about Fullscript is the convenience it offers. With their user-friendly online platform, I can easily browse, prescribe, and manage supplement protocols for my patients. It saves me valuable time and streamlines the ordering process. Absolutely, Fullscript makes it easy to create customized protocols for your patients and track their progress. Plus, they handle all the logistics from inventory management to shipping, so you can focus on what matters most, providing excellent care to your patients. So if you're ready to take your functional medicine practice or wellness to the next level, visit us.fullscript.com slash welcome slash maximal being that's us.fullscript.com slash welcome slash maximal being to receive your 15 percent discount on customized supplements and check maximal being standardized protocols for gut health fullscript has been a game changer for my practice and i know it will be for yours don't miss out on this incredible resource for functional medicine practitioners and patients alike today which brings me to our next study. Um, and so this is long-term aspirin use and cancer risk, a 20-year cohort study. It's published in the Journal of National Cancer Institute in 2024, April. Um, the lead author is Charlotte Scriver. Um, Charlotte Scriver is out of the Danish Institute um, of uh, uh, Cancer um, in Denmark. Um, in this study, they used uh, nationwide registries. Uh, they followed individuals um, aged 40 to 70 um, from 1997 all the way through 2018. Um, they assessed their aspirin use, and this is low dose aspirin defined as under 150 milligrams. Typically, you're at 325 if you're if you have something like a cardiac stent. Um, and um, they also looked at high dose aspirin use as well, which they defined as greater than 500 in this case. They looked at uh, close to 2 million individuals, about 400,000 of which were diagnosed with a cancer at, at follow up. Um, and what they found in this group is that the low dose aspirin use uh, did reduce the risk of cancer, uh, irrespective of duration of use uh, over the, the time period which people were, were taking it. And in particular, uh, this uh, reduction um, when used uh, long-term, um, about five or 10 years, uh, was found to have a 10% reduction of uh, certain cancer uh, sites, including the colon, rectum, esophagus, stomach, liver, pancreas, small intestine, head and neck, brain cancers like meningiomas, melanoma, thyroid, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and leukemia. They did find a slightly higher elevated hazard ratio for, for lung and bladder cancer. Um, and they also found uh, overall cancer reduction risk of about 0.89 in uh, all these cancer sites that I listed. Um, there's also some prior data about COX-2 inhibitors, salicoxib being the primary one in their use. Um, that data was published in the New England Journal of Medicine years ago. 
Um, I've had a few patients approach me on this and it's will, you know, willing to try that, but there are subsequent studies that have shown that uh, celecoxib actually has uh, a slightly higher adverse event rate. So there's more people that have bleeding, ulcers, um, and cardiac events in, the, in that group for the prevention of cancer. Um, so this is an interesting study. Um, aspirin, in my mind, is overall, you know, a little bit more benign of a drug. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's pretty safe in general, especially in a low dose. Um, it's relatively cheap. Um, and it has been proven to have additional benefits, not just that of, um, you know, cancer. Um, how does this work? Well, we think, you know, platelet aggregation or uh, the ability for platelets to kind of stack on each other is an important part of this. And mitigation of inflammation also may be a, a part, but there may be some growth factors that are acted on by this. Um, and so, you know, it's something to consult with your doctor on um, and discuss um, a really exciting article, I think, in the colon cancer space. Um, so, you know, pretty brief today, but I just wanted to go ahead and highlight these really important articles. I just thought they were really interesting. I wanted to talk to all of you about them. Again, leave us that five-star review. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I also wanted to let you know we've moved our website to thedocmock.com. You can sign up for our email list. You'll get some goodies in there. Um, and we're planning a webinar-based teaching seminar and kind of like my method, my approach to functional medicine. So stay tuned on that. Um, and until next time, this is Doc Mock, and I am here to maximize your health. The content included is not intended to be used as medical advice, and viewers should consult their physician or healthcare provider should they have additional questions. The viewers should not rely on information contained in these presentations for immediate or urgent medical needs. Additionally, if you think you have a medical emergency, call your physician or go to the emergency department or call 911 immediately. Never disregard professional medical advice or rely on seeking medical care or delay medical care due to information contained in this presentation. What's going on, Maximal Beings? Doc Mock here. If you haven't done so already, leave us a comment and hit the subscribe button. Let your friends and family know. That way we can get the word out and continue to bash the bro science.